In today's video, I'll share five Photoshop hacks that will transform your portraits. Big thanks to ViewSonic for sponsoring this video. More on them a little later. Let's get into the first thing on my list, a hack that I call Frequency Separation Detail Enhancer. To begin, duplicate your background layer twice by hitting Ctrl or Command J on your keyboard. Name the top layer high and the bottom layer low. Select the low layer and go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. Select a radius that blurs the details a bit and press OK. Now we'll select our high layer and go to Image, Apply Image. If you're working on a 16-bit image, like the one that I'm working on now, you'll want to choose the settings that you see here on the screen. Then change the blending mode to linear light. So far, this is just your standard setup for frequency separation. Here's where the magic comes in. Head over to the Adjustments panel and add a Brightness Contrast layer. Leave the brightness as zero and set the contrast to plus 50. Then place your cursor between the high layer and this new brightness contrast layer that you just made. While holding down the Alt or Option key, click on your mouse. This will clip this new layer you just made to the high layer. You'll notice that the details in your image will be enhanced, giving you a sharpened look. This layer not only helps you to see the details in your portraits a little better when you're retouching, but you can also selectively sharpen different areas of the image once you're all done. To do this, simply select the layer mask on the brightness contrast layer that you created and hit Control or Command I to hide layer. Then using the brush tool, you can paint on the effects of that layer as needed, where it's needed. This next hack is an absolute game changer. But before we get into it, I have to show you this awesome monitor from ViewSonic. They were kind enough to sponsor this video and send me their VP3881 Ultra Wide Curved Monitor to show you all. This beautiful monitor has a 38 inch screen with 4K resolution and support for HDR10. Color is an obvious and important factor when choosing a monitor, as nothing can be worse than retouching your portraits thinking that the colors look a certain way and then realizing the colors were actually way different than what you're seeing. To that end, this monitor has a Delta E of less than two, which ensures that you're getting excellent color accuracy. The curved screen is so big, I could have Photoshop open on one side while splitting up the other side to display one or two more windows to really maximize my productivity. For more details on this monitor, check out the link in the description of this video. Continuing on with my next hack, this is channel masking. This technique can be used to do a variety of things, including color grading your portraits. To do this, click on the channels tab. There, you'll see your image separated into four layers, RGB, red, green, and blue, represented as grayscale images. If we turn off some of these layers and start working with these one by one and look at the red channel, for example, you could see the parts of the image where the reds are most prevalent, which in this case is the skin. With this in mind, we're going to create a mask that will allow us to refine how we apply color adjustments to our image. To begin, hold down the Control or Command key and select your red channel. You'll notice that this applies marching ants across all of the areas of the image that are within that red channel. Now we'll go back to our Layers panel and then go over to the Adjustments panel. From here, we'll add a Color Balance layer. You'll notice the Adjustment layer has been added, but check out that mask. This is the mask that was created when I selected the red channel. When it comes to masks, anything that is pure white is revealed, anything that is pure black is hidden. Any of the gray levels in between black and white simply show a little bit more or a little bit less of the adjustments that are made. Now we can go to our color balance layer and begin making targeted color adjustments to our image. You can use the same technique with other adjustment layers as well. Just follow the same steps as before and choose the adjustment layer of your choice. Another way you could apply color adjustments to an image is by using Apply Image. This will create a mask, sort of like how it's done in channels, but perhaps a bit more random. To do this, we'll add a color balance layer to the image. Then we go up to Image, Apply Image. In this window, you don't have to make any adjustments, simply click OK. You'll notice a layer mask has been applied, and again, you're able to tweak your color settings in a more interesting way. 
This next trick is one that is quick and easy and really good to use when you're wanting to make some luminosity adjustments to your images. Simply add a Levels Adjustment layer. In the Properties dialog box, click Auto. After a few seconds, your levels will be automatically adjusted, adding brightness and contrast if needed to your image. The effect can be lowered in opacity if it's too strong for your tastes. And you could also use the Apply Image Mask as well as the Channel Mask to come up with some interesting results. This next Photoshop hack is a great way to add more contrast to your images using a black and white adjustment layer. To begin, we'll add a black and white adjustment layer, then change the blend mode to soft light. You'll notice that the contrast in the image is probably too intense, but that's okay since we have a variety of ways we could apply the effect to our image. We can choose, for example, to lower the opacity of the effect. We could hide the effect behind a black mask, and then using a white brush, we can paint on the mask in different areas to reveal the contrast as needed. And of course, you could also use the apply image or channel mask technique that was described earlier. These portrait tips are things that I use in my retouching pretty much all the time. Let me know which technique was your favorite in the comment section below. Be sure to subscribe to my channel while you're there as I release new videos here every single week. Now, if you want to continue leveling up your portrait game, check out the video that you see here on the screen. I'll see you there.